What an opening night matchup we have on this presentation of the South Atlantic Conference on the Bears Sports Network presented by NBA Roofing. One of the oldest rivalries in the sack renewed again as the Wingate Bulldogs travel to Hickory to take on the Lenore Ryan Bears. Eric Bach, happy to be joined by former Lenore Ryan men's basketball assistant coach Blake Simmons. And Blake, this is one of the best rivalries in Division II. It's one of the closest rivalries in Division mm. II. Each game since 2013 has been decided by single digits. Think about that. Since 2013, single digits. And they've split the last seven. It's Wingate's turn to win if we're going by that history. But you know Lenore Ryan wants to defend home court. It's a lot of roster turnover coming this year for the Bears. And this is a real measuring stick game for both of these teams early in the conference opener that could have a lot to say about seeding later on this season come March. Absolutely. You know, most times you get a non-conference eight, ten games to get going before conference season. But in D2 in the sack, it's right into conference season, third game of the year in the first week. So, like you said, important game for LR in terms of who knows what the standings look like down the road. So you got to take everyone seriously. I know that's kind of cliche, but it's true. Um, and it's just a great, great to have the fans back yeah. in the shoe. Last year was just different for everything, but makes it just mu that much more special when you have fans, especially the student section back. It's just a whole different atmosphere. So. Yeah, it's a full student section across the way, but these are two teams that are very different coming into this year. You know, the Bears lost 80% of their scoring from last year's roster. Winget returns all five of their starters from last year's team, but the Bears found a way to score the basketball over the weekend. They split a couple of games down at Queens against Peach Belt opponents in Young Harris and Emmanuel, but, you know, they have been able to put the ball in the basket, and that was something that was a question mark coming in after all that scoring was gone brought in a couple transfers Jalen Johnson who was on the team left and came back went crazy for 34 points the last time out and got to think he's going to need another big scoring night tonight to, to pace the Bears offensively absolutely I mean Jalen had I mean maybe the best shooting performance I've seen yeah. since I've been a part of the LR program or around the LR program um, so that absolutely helped against John Harris getting those 90 plus points um, but like you said it was a little bit concern coming in scoring the ball but they answered those questions in the first weekend. It's, just, it, it's an exciting brand of basketball. Wingate plays the same way, so there should be no shortage of offense tonight. Yeah, it's a typical Wingate team, plays up and down. They've taken 33s in each of their first two games. The Bulldogs are 2-0. and They got a good win against Belmont Abbey, who's a historically good team. They're a conference champion from a year ago. So the Bulldogs come in undefeated and looking to get off to a good start here in conference play as are the Bears who are coming off as I mentioned the eight-point win down at Queens over Young Harris and coach Everett Sullivan an even 500 66 and 66 in the beginning of year six but he's had success against Wingate I mean you were on his staff and a lot of big wins including one here last year which it was a shame there were no fans in the stands when Cooper Fowler hit the game winner here against Wingate last February but that was a classic game, and if this game shapes up to be anything like the women's game we just saw that went to overtime, a 71-68 to Wingate win, this should be another instant classic and a rivalry that has produced so many over the years. Absolutely. Like you said, last year was uh, probably the craziest yeah. buzzer beater I've, ever, I've been a part of personally in basketball, um, the way it ended with Cooper putting it back from basically 17 feet. And like you mentioned at the Open, the, this, game, uh, this series goes back and forth, so odds are we're going to have another close game, like you said, single digit since 2013, I believe. Yeah, in the, so. in the two meetings last year, a combined four points separated the two. Wingate won down at Wingate. Lenore Ryan obviously here inside the shoe, but you see the fans there in the background. That was what was missing last year and it's the new shoe smell as coach sully describes it with the new floor the new lighting it's a better atmosphere it's a better ambiance here in this gym and this is the first time we've really gotten to see it on full display with with a basketball doubleheader against the bears biggest rival in wingate absolutely this is there's a special place to play when the fans are here and the crowd's big i mean there's not a better place to play in the south London conference i don't think that's even up for debate you could ask other teams and coaches it's just a special environment with LR being the only show in town so to speak so like we mentioned before to have the fans back the student section back it just makes it that environment so much but so, that much more special 
talking to the Bear coaching staff today, they have the utmost respect for Wingate, but they think the key to the game is just them doing them. They don't have to worry so much about what Wingate's doing as opposed to just taking care of their own business. And, you know, you got, you mentioned, Jay, I mentioned Jalen Johnson, who is a newcomer back. He went to Brunswick Community College after starting his career here. Tim Steele is back, and he's kind of the catalyst offensively. Cooper Fowler's back, but Nas Tyson, the junior who comes from Wingate, wears 23. And Kevin Kangu, the transfer from Oakland. Bears in white. Bulldogs in navy blue. The latest edition of LR Wingate underway from the shoe. And it goes, the first possession of the game will go to Lenore Ryan as they reset the shot clock. And here we go. Bulldogs have one of the best backcourts in the sack. And Richard Pringle and Jared Cottingham as Fowler has the open layup to start things off. A good set for the Bears. Great look by Jalen there. Cooper was going to set a, uh, an off-ball screen, slipped to the rim, was wide open for that layup. Fowler's career high of 22 points came against the Bulldogs in his freshman season back on New Year's Day. Here's Donnell Nixon. Gives it off to Cottingham. And the kick, and wing it through it to LR, but Bears weren't able to get it. Corner three for Elmore is missed. The ball tipped around and back to the Bears. Like you mentioned, yeah, Cooper, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was his first start of his, second start of his freshman year on that New Year's Day, and he probably had his best game, you could argue, as a Bear, 22 and 10, two years ago on his way to a sack uh, freshman all-conference team. Tim Steele averaging 10 a game through two. Had 7 and 13 in the two games down at Queens. There's Jalen Johnson and the free throw line jumper drops. He, the basket is huge right now for him. Great job by Jalen there. Playing off two feet under control. Getting to the spot he wanted to and knocking down that free throw line jumper. That's Cottingham with the basketball. First team all sack a year ago. Nas Tyson on him. Open three for Elmore. Clanks off the back iron, but an offensive rebound for Taylor and an offensive foul. Tim Steele, he did that this past weekend. I think he had four charges combined in the two games. That's one of the things he's known for, is putting his nose in there and taking that charge. Fouls on Elmore, who's averaging nine and a half points per game as you take a look at the Spangle replay, but Steele, they just, coaches said the team, all around is better when Tim Steele is on the floor. And he does it on offense and defense, as you saw right there. Kevin Kangu, the transfer, has a path to the basket in the first six to the Bears. Great job with the hesitation there off the ball screen, kind of freezing that ball screen defender, making him go back to his man and then having that open lane to the basket for Pring the easy buzz. Pringle a three short. Wingy can't throw it in the ocean, an 0-for-3 start for them. I think LR will live with Pringle shooting that. That's not what he's known for. Kangu fades and fills it up. Four points for him. Average 13 a game in the opening two games. Transfer from Oakland. Was perfect from behind the line against Young Harris as well. Cottingham. Blocked by Fowler and grabbed by Kangu. Great job by Cooper there, going straight up, not fouling. Johnson an open three. He's been hitting those, but he misses that one. Great transi transition opportunity there with Nas Tyson. One more into Jalen for an open three. That's who you want shooting that right now with the way he's feeling. Nixon misses the three, and the rebound to Nas Tyson. No numbers, and he pulls it back out. Kangu jab step, gets in the lane, and gets fouled. That one's on Pringle, his first. The team's second. And shooting two is Nas Tyson. Take a look at the Spangler replay of the drive. Excuse me, that's Kangu shooting two. Three for three from the line on the year. Bears have done a great job at this point, pushing it in transition, playing the advantage basketball. This is one part of the game that the Bears weren't great at in the first two games down in Queens. Only 57% from the free throw line as a team. 
But they start two for two tonight as Kangoo comes out. Tyson McLean comes in, but a quick six for Kevin Kangoo. Six of the first nine. Pardon me, six of the first ten for the Bears go to Kevin. Danell Nixon running the point, commits a, an illegal screen. He had ten and a half points per game, had a season-ending injury just four games into the season last year, and just a sloppy turnover and a sloppy start offensively for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he kind of makes them go. I know Cottingham's the leading scorer, but he, he handles the majority of the, the basketball, bringing it up the floor. Skilled player, obviously you can see not the biggest player, but uh, he, he's, the, he's the guy that makes them go, in my opinion. Another easy two for Jalen Johnson, and it's 12 nothing. Tripping and falling, and they say a push as Cottingham got a step on his defender and a push from behind called there the first foul on LR on Nas Tyson Cottingham loves driving baseline whether it's uh, rejecting the ball screen going another way that the ball screen is being set or just catching it on the wing and going baseline super quick and super athletic so he's able most of the time to get to the rim and either get fouled and make the layup can't even make a free throw still a goose egg on the board for Winget is Cottingham Last year, a 77% free throw shooter. Junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Misses both. Ball tipped around and grabbed by TJ Naismith, wearing the Rip Hamilton face mask in the game for the first time. TJ, the transfer from Cape Fear Community College. Johnson crossover. Too strong. Might not be the shot Coach Sully wants at the moment. Playing pretty well. Keep move, moving the ball, see if he can get an easy one. All tipped around on top, and there's a foul on T.J. Naismith as he ended up on the back of Rashard Pringle there. Pringle, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. First foul on T.J. Naismith, the second on the Bears. Wingett will trigger from under their basket. Sean Elmore, the inbounder. Cottingham off the screen. Easy finger roll for the Bulldogs' first point of the game. Yeah, just a little too easy there for Cottingham. Got past that first line of defense. There was nobody there to challenge him at the rim. Media timeout coming at the next whistle. So first four minutes, only two points allowed for LR. Tyson off the screen. Sends it off to Tyson McLean, redshirt senior from Spartanburg. Naismith can shoot it from there. That one was ugly off the back iron. Destin Clark gets into the lane and traveled. Shuffled the feet. And that will take us to our first media timeout of the game. Can't ask for a better start if you're Lenore Ryan. They've hit five of their first eight shots and held the Bulldogs to one for their first six from the floor. Lenore Ryan 12, wing it two, under 16 in the first half from the shoe. Celebrate great with Carolina West Wireless. Great new phones and a great customer experience all on our great nationwide high-speed network. Stop by today and get big savings on select Samsung smartphones, like $350 off the Samsung Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus, and $350 off the Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra. The great savings continue with four lines of unlimited data for just $35 a month per line. Celebrate great savings and go stay connected wherever your travels take you. Good start for Lenore Ryan here inside Schufer Gymnasium. Opening night of SAC Conference play here on the Bears Sports Network. Wingett has more turnovers than they do points. Three turnovers and two points, and it's an early 10-point lead for Lenore Ryan over their rival Bulldogs. 
Elijah Shabazz in the game for the first time. Junior from Raleigh. The primary ball handler when he comes in. Kangu back in the game as well. Shabazz shot fake. Malik Legania dumps it off to Kangu, whose three is short. Rebound to Destin Clark. Bulldogs looking to push. Nixon. Corner three, and they stepped out of bounds. Elmore had his foot on the line right in front of that rowdy student section down there, and it's another Bulldog turnover. Elmore just buried himself in the corner there, but Shabazz, who comes off the bench, will be the primary ball handler when he's in the game. Dribble handoff to Kangu, who's got six early points. Between the legs, to the rim, off the glass. Great move there by Kangu, getting, getting to the rim. LR's doing a good job running their offense so far, getting to the actions they want to get to, and getting the advantages to get downhill and get to the rim. Kangu's been the most consistent guy offensively in practices and scrimmages and in games. There's a dump off to Clark, and he will head to the free throw line. Got fouled pretty hard there by Shabazz. Pardon me, Tyson McLean with the foul, but 14 to two, Lenore Ryan here early. Elijah just lost sight of his man there as the ball was being driven and Clark was able to sneak behind his head and get to the free throw line. Clark, the freshman from Indian land, South Carolina, doesn't look like a freshman. Big and strong, rattles the first free throw in. No, he looks like a linebacker, and I think the thing that stands out the most is in 20 minutes a game, he's averaging eight rebounds so far in two games here. Obviously not a huge sample size, but that's impressive. Clark 6-3, 2 This is the second, the rebound to Fowler, who didn't hardly play in the Young-Harris game because of the style of that game. Young-Harris is just hair on fire up and down the whole game. Doesn't really fit in Fowler's repertoire, but expect a lot more minutes tonight as McLean bothered, but gets the roll. Great job there by Tyson getting the ball high on the glass to avoid the shot blocker coming over from the weak side. Guy that the coaching staff says plays the hardest out of anybody on their team. Clark slips off the dribble handoff. This is Vontrez Roberts and a blocking foul called there on the Bears. That one's on Lagania. And two shots coming for Vontrez Roberts, sophomore from Augusta, Georgia. It's a good try by Malik there. You can appreciate the effort to try and get over there and draw that charge, but I think he was just a little late, and his feet were still moving. Vontrez, five points, four rebounds per game, gets the first. Only one bucket in this game for Wingate. Two free throws. And now three free throws, but the lead's still 11 for the Bears. What a great opening night of SAC Conference basketball here tonight from the shoe. McLean stops and hits. Went to the rim the last time, pulled up this time, showing his repertoire the past couple possessions. Great job there by Tyson, playing under control, kind of like Jalen did earlier in the game. Getting to a spot in the mid-range and knocking down the, the shot. Fowler with the block steal. Bears looking to run. Kangu slashing. Shabazz backdoor misses the reverse. Great push and transition there by Kangu. Great cut by Elijah, just wasn't able to finish Finished that reverse layup, but great job there by the Bears getting out in transition. Cottingham has ha got nothing easy so far. Pulls a three straight away and hits it. That maybe will get Wingate going a little bit. They've been completely stagnant offensively here in the first seven minutes. Cottingham will take some shots he'll consider bad, but he's he's a caliber player, all-conference player last year. That'll make him, so he gets a little leeway with Coach Good in terms of shot selection. Not a good able to knock it down there. Can't let him get hot if you're the Bears. He takes past McLean. There's a run over and a foul defensively there on Tim Steele. Might have been in the restricted area. I never saw a signal. 
And Coach Sullivan, two straight blocking fouls called on Lenore Ryan. Take a look at the Spangler replay. And he's out of the RA. I don't know. I think I think he just didn't take it in the chest square on. I think he kind of jumped to avoid him. Not sure he was in legal guarding position before Cottingham left the ground. So I think that was a good call there from the ref. 18-9 LR. Cottingham has six of the nine for the Bulldogs. Makes them both. 17.4 points per game last year. For the junior, Jaron Cottingham. The screen from Fowler. He'll shoot it. He can make that. Misses it left. Has bet, gotten off to a really slow shooting start this season, but the coaching staff is just waiting for them to fall because Cooper Fowler, as you know, is a, a good outside shooter. Absolutely shot 35% his freshman year. So he is more than capable of knocking him down. Cottingham getting hot. I think that's eight straight points for it him. It is. Eight nothing run for the Bulldogs over the last minute and a half. The lead is just five now for the Bears. It was 14 at one point. Kangu. Rebound grabbed by Roberts. You want to find Cottingham in transition here. Don't let him get going downhill. He's got 10 of the wing at 13. Roberts tries to back down Fowler, buries himself under the basket, and another open look for Cottingham. This one's short. Rebound Bear, to Steele. Bears fortunate there. Cottingham got a wide open look. Fell right into his hands. I think the ball got knocked away from Roberts there, but Bears fortunate. Fowler will take another. He'll hit this one. Got to get him going offensively, and that's got to be a big confidence-boosting three there for Coop. Absolutely. Great job there by Nas Tyson drawing two, and on that empty ball screen and throwing it back to Cooper for that wide open look. But yeah, like you said, getting Cooper going, make, hitting some shots is, would be huge for the Bears here early in the year. Five points for him, Cottingham slashing, almost traveled. Next whistle is the under 12 media timeout. This ball not able to thread the needle and another turnover for Wingett, there six. So after an eight nothing burst for the Bulldogs, the Bears score the last five and lead by eight, 21 to 13, 11 minutes even to go in the first half from the shoe on opening nights of conference play on the Bears Sports Network. Emergencies don't wait. Get to the hospital. Accidents happen. Get well soon. When it hurts to move forward, tackle your pain. Don't make your health wait. See your doctor. Your health means everything. Back here at the shoe, eight point lead for the Bears, nine minutes in to the latest edition of the LR Wingate rivalry. A rivalry that has been historically close, especially over the past decade or so. As I mentioned, ever since 2013, there has been one matchup decided by double digit points and that game was decided by 10. So it has been single digits in every single game they met twice per year every year since then. It's rare to see a rivalry that close. Bears have the basketball and the lead. Jalen Johnson, 30, coming off a 34 point game. Fowler will take another. He's feeling it from the outside. They were waiting for him to get hot. And maybe tonight is the night for Coop. Cooper loves seeing the Bulldogs in, in the shoe. Hit the game winner in an instant classic last year that made the Sports Center top 10. Fans of both teams, I'm sure, remember that one. Comes up with the steal here, trying to lead the break. Kangu pulls it back out, and the Bears will reset in the half court. 
Post entry to Fowler. Guarded by Roberts. Coop to the right shoulder. Easy two. He's got everything working right now. He's into double figures. Cooper's feeling really good right now. Did a great job calling for that ball on the block. Last possession down. Cottingham fouled by Kangu. It's a tough one to go up there. You don't want to foul anybody on a three-point shot, but especially not Cottingham, who's scored 10 in the first 10 minutes, probably all of them in the last eight of the 10 in the last three minutes. So don't want to give him anything easy. Wingett's only taken nine shots here through the first 10 minutes, and seven of them have been threes. So they're not getting the ball inside at all. But you mentioned Cottingham in double figures now has 11 points, 11 of the 14 for the Bulldogs. They've turned it over seven times. Bears haven't turned it over once yet. Got to think this is about a perfect start for Coach Sully other than that foul on the three-pointer there by Kangu. And... Malik Laganya will come back in for steal. Nobody in foul trouble yet for the Bears, who have committed 16 fouls, so we can get in the bonus the rest of the half. Yeah, the Bears doing a little bit different this first half as opposed to uh, the last game against Young Harris. They were doing it from three against Young Harris. So far tonight, they're doing it in the paint with 12 paint points as of last media timeout. So a little, getting it done a little differently, but still scoring. 14 paint points now after the bucket from Fowler. Johnson one-on-one, -on -one, gets past his defender, shielded him off and laid it in. Wing gets switching the ball screens. That's a tough matchup for anybody to stay in front of Jalen, but especially the big five-man Taylor. So that could play to the Bears' advantage as long as uh, Jalen stays aggressive and doesn't necessarily settle for those three-point shots when he plays. Here's a steal from Tyson. Doesn't have the numbers, but will take it anyway off the glass. What a start for Lenore Ryan. They're shooting 62%, and they're up 14, their biggest lead of the night. Great job by Nas there, jumping down the passing lane. Pringle a three, short, but the offensive rebound to Nixon. Donnell backs it out. Sophomore from Buford, Georgia, pulls it, and the rebound to Laganya. Malik pushing, floater, too strong. I think he got fouled there, so he went up with the shot. Didn't get the call from the ref. Tripped and fell on his way back on defense. Cottingham gets the screen. Through contact, short, but the put back in for Quantra Taylor. Wingett is out-rebounding the Bears. That's their third offensive rebound and a bad pass. Little miscommunication there between Jalen and Coop. Taylor can't catch it on a bad pass there. Very fortunate there that the... Bulldogs weren't able to capitalize on that lob. A little bit of a November basketball sequence there from the Bears first and then the Bulldogs. Kangu. From my neck of the woods. He's from Canada but went to school at Oakland. Played for the Grizzlies, two to shoot. Johnson fades away and gets the roll. Great job by Jalen there. Like we mentioned, he didn't settle. He attacked the five-man and got to his spot and was able to knock down that little free throw line jumper. Lead back to 14. Andreas Wilson off the bounce. Gets it back to Taylor, who misses the bunny. Fowler on the ground. The two of them go down. Everybody seems to be okay. Four on four. Tyson... Almost looked like he got fouled as he bumped up, got bumped out of bounds there. Fowler back, takes the foul, and they're going to say, is he shooting or not? Haven't seen a signal yet. It's the first foul on Fowler, and it is a shooting foul. I think that's the right call. Yeah, not the worst foul there. Looked like it was going to end up an easy two, so thank you, from the free throw line. When we come back from break. Under eight timeout, Cottingham at the line. When you come back to the shoe, and the Bears up 14 on Wingate.
Welcome back to the shoe. 32-18, Lenore Ryan over Wingate. Two free throws for Jaron Cottingham coming up, who's already shot seven free throws here in the first 12 plus minutes of this one. Eric Bach and Blake Simmons, so glad you are along with us on what is a super exciting opening night of conference play here inside the newly renovated Schufer Gymnasium in a measuring stick game for both of these two to figure out exactly where they are in conference play this season. Cottingham with 13 points, now 14 points. Where would Wingett be without him tonight? Yeah, he, he appears well on his way to uh, get into his 20th straight, uh, fourth straight 20 point game against the Bears. Cottingham loves to play the Bears just like Fowler loves to play the Bulldogs as Sean Elmore will come back in for Wingett. Cottingham takes a seat. The plus minus is impressive for the three guards, Johnson, Kangu, and Tyson. Plus 15 as there's the first turnover of the game for Lenore Ryan as they threw it in too deep. Looks Hard like straight. Wingett might be going for a Pressure defense here for the Bears. Pringle has to back it out with 12 to shoot. Elmore guarded by McLean. Elmore fades away in the middle of the lane and gets the tough two to drop. Good job by Elmore there to use, not get sped up by the clock, get into the middle of the paint and hit that little fadeaway jumper. Fowler off the floor right now for the Bears. It's Sal Wilson in for the first time, and an open three for McLean. Off front iron, no good. Rebound to Pringle. Andreas Wilson, 10 points per game last year, but turns it over. Steal by, a steal by steal. Shabazz kicks it back. Sal Wilson plus a foul. Great job by Elijah Push, and looked like he got Caught up in the air for a second, was able to find Sal, and Sal's able to get to the basket for a three-point play. Take a look at the Spangler replay. The steal by Tim Steele. Bears use the numbers to their advantage. As the foul was on Elmore. Only the third free throw attempt of this game for LR. Sal only averaging eight minutes per game and two points per game, but already has exceeded that as... Cottingham's stay on the bench was very short-lived as all of a sudden the lead is back to 13, and Brian Good sends his star right back in. Fairly quick-moving first half here at the shoe. Nixon doubled. P.J. Joseph in the game for the first time. And Cottingham late clock. Gets a screen and some help. Good help by Joseph. Some contact in the middle of the lane and a blocking foul there. On Steele again. That's the second one he's been called for. Both of his fouls have been very similar. And back to the free throw line goes Winget. Yeah, Bears did a great job there defensively for, almost, for 28 seconds on, on the, of the shot clock. But gave up that that foul around the rim with two seconds left. Yeah, Tim tried to get over there, but it was, a, it was a flop. Roberts swishes the first. He's got four points now, all of them from the free throw line. And it's back to 11. P.J. Joseph, he and Kangu both came from Greg Campy's program in Oakland. McLean shot fakes, gets a step, and then turns it over. And then Joseph turns it right back, goes up, and gets fouled as he tried to hammer that ball down. But a smart play there by Andreas Wilson to just take the foul and prevent the dunk. Great awareness there by 
uh, P.J. Joseph in transition, was able to cut off the dribble and then use his length to bother Wilson, get that steal, and then try and finish on him at the rim. Right now, P.J. Joseph's largest value for the team, according to the coaching staff, is his defense. And on display there as he clanks the free throw, but he created the turnover. Played eight minutes against Emmanuel, scored four points. And splits the pair. But so far, so good this season. And the Bears scoring the basketball. They lost two 15-plus points per game scores from a year ago. 80 And 80% 80 of their total scoring. But put up 94 against Young Harris and 36 in the first 15 minutes tonight. Off the screen, Nixon dumps it off. Almost a turnover, but laying it in is Vontrez Roberts, who has given Wingate a lot of good minutes off the bench tonight. Yeah, he's been the better of the bigs between him and Taylor so far tonight. Scoring at the free throw line and around the rim. He's, like you said, he's given them great minutes up to this point. Got six points. Damian Medwinter in the game for the first time. Richard, sophomore from Trumbull, Connecticut. Wingate switching up defense to try and throw the Bears off. Joseph hits a corner three. That's not something you're going to see too often, but that's the kind of first half it's been for LR. Yeah, the Bears are a little, little uh, discombobulated to start there when they, they switched to zone, but was able to find Joseph for a wide open corner three, and he knocked it down. Roberts can't catch the pass. Bears look to push, and now we'll get back into the half court. Sal Wilson. One of the secondary ball handlers as Wingett has gone into a zone here. I think some of them are in the zone, some of them are in man. I don't think they know what they're doing. Bears settle for an outside jumper, though. Cottingham jogs it up the floor. Crossover in the lane. That finger roll was so good earlier, but he missed that one. But there's Roberts again to clean up the miss. It's four offensive rebounds, and at least three of them have come, have resulted in points for the Bulldogs, and they only trail by 11. Yeah, Roberts and Cottingham have kept them in the game. And a timeout called by Lenore Ryan. And that will take us to the under four timeout. One of the players on the floor called the timeout. Medwinter was the one that did it. So that'll take us to the under four media timeout. Bears maintaining their double digit lead, shooting at 59% so far in the first half. See if they can keep it going until halftime when you come back on the Bears Sports Network. Welcome back to the shoe. Lenore Ryan, 39. Wingate, 28. It's been a really good offensive first half for the Bears. 16 for 27 from the field. And if they start shooting it a little better from three, it's only three for 12 and two of those three. All three threes have come from their bigs. Cooper Fowler with two three-pointers and P.J. Joseph with one. Bears called the timeout. We'll get into their half court with 15 on the shot clock. Kangu, Wilson, and Johnson all on the floor right now. And there is a near turnover, but Johnson able to grab it. Four to shoot, has to hurry. Floater, short. Cottingham shot fake to the rim, got hit and fouled on the drive by P.J. Joseph. Joseph's first and the team's ninth, so one and one coming for Jaron Cottingham. I think the two biggest stats that stand out so far that have led to this lead for LR have been uh, the 19 points off turnovers and, and 22 points in the paint compared to four points off turnovers for Wingate and eight points in the paint for Wingate. 
So Eloy is dominating those two areas, which is usually a good sign. Cottingham's 10th free throw attempt of this first half is down the hatch. He's 8 for 10 in those attempts as McLean comes back in. With that being said, I bet if you ask Coach Good at this point in the game, if they had one assist and 12 turnovers and they were only down 10, he'd take it. Yep. And what, that what's kept him in the game is those free throws that you you mentioned. Cottingham, obviously, leading the way in that, that uh, category. They are 14 for 17 from the free throw line in the first half, compared to 4 for 5 for LR. Lead is single digits for the first time in a while. Wingate definitely in zone now. As Fowler's checked back in. Surrounded. Corner three passed up by Johnson. He slashes, nearly turns it over. Six to shoot. Fowler, one dribble, has to take a contested three and airballs it. That was a good defensive possession there for Wingett. They've seemed more comfortable defensively in the zone. Yeah, and years past, Wingett's, if they struggled to guard, they've gone to the zone like they've done here, and it's, in the games against us, has helped them for sure. And right, so far, these last couple of possessions, it's helped them kind of throw the Bears with them off offensively and force them into taking shots they don't necessarily want to take. Roberts has been awesome in this first half. Misses there, the rebound grab by McLean. Great job by Cooper there, staying between the rim and Roberts, and Cooper's size just allowed him to affect that shot. Kangoo slashing and traveled. Got caught in no man's land, couldn't decide if he wanted to pass or shoot, and took the extra step. Yeah, like we mentioned, just that different look of zone. Not necessarily man for man, more zone. He looked looked to pass it, but was surprised when that guy was there because they were in zone as opposed to man. Cottingham too strong. Tyson grabs the rebound in the corner. This last minute 55, really important for Lenore Ryan and Winget. Both teams, uh, Winget trying to shorten this lead, and the Bears trying to get it back to double digits. Lenore Ryan's been in control as Tyson slashes for two. Great job by Nas doing what they were doing against the man. Slat, getting to the basket, finishing at the rim as opposed to playing on the perimeter and shooting a jumper. Best basketball instincts on the team, according to the coaching staff. Give and go and a foul on Fowler, no pun intended, as Destin Clark will head to the line. It's Fowler's second, so I would think he will probably be done for the last minute 26 of the first half as we take a look at the Spangler replay. First free throw good for Vontrez Roberts, who is now five for five from the free throw line. That's nine points here in the first half off the bench. Almost doubling his season average of five points per game. Gets the roll, it's back to nine. Sasha Latino comes in, freshman from St. Petersburg, Russia, getting some late first half minutes here. Minute 15 to go. T.J. Naismith back in the game. Kangoo passed up a three. Johnson will not. From the corner. Over the top. Back to the Bulldogs. Feels like a big possession in this game. If Wingett can get a bucket, even a three, to cut this thing down to six, they're going to feel a lot better about themselves going into the locker room. They'll feel great, in my opinion, going into the locker room if they will cut this to seven or six. Keep this under double digits before the half, so... Like you said, big possession here. In the hands of Cottingham with 12 to shoot. Blows by one defender, got stripped and grabbed by the Bears. What a defensive play there by LR. Back to Naismith, lays it in. It's a big sequence there, a steal and a bucket. Extends the lead again. Driving baseline is Destin Clark, and he lays it in. And now with the shot clock off, when Orion can hold for the final shot of the half. I know it's hard when you're in the flow of the game, but that was one of those times that TJ just needed a short close out there. Don't run it at five. 
He's not a shooter. Corner three going down is Kengu. The lead is 12. Wingate turns it over. What a first half for Lenore Ryan. They shoot 57%, score 46 points, and lead their rival Bulldogs 46 to 34. If you take a look at that three for Kevin Kangu, who finished with 11 points in that first half. But Blake, you really offensively couldn't have asked for a better first half if you're Coach Sullivan and Lenore Ryan. No, you couldn't. I mean, the one area that they struggled in was three-point shooting, but like you said, 46 points in a half, any half is great. Uh, is a great start. Is a great half scoring-wise. So, like you said, offensively, you couldn't. I mean, you could ask for more, but not much more. So, it was a great start for the Bears offensively and pretty good defensively too. I mean, 34 points, and really, I mean, the fouls. Uh, Wingate get to the foul line was what hurt LR the most. Yeah, Wingate, 16 points from the foul line and 18 points from the floor. I mean, that's that's a pretty. That's a pretty interesting number there. The Bulldogs only took 21 shots from the floor and they took 19 free throws in the first half. And Jared Cottingham getting to the rim really kind of sparked that winged offense as they sputtered through the first four or five minutes of the game, but Cottingham really took over and kept the Bulldogs within striking distance. Here. Yeah, yeah, like you said, Cottingham kind of got hot there after the first five minutes or so, was able to get to the line, and then Roberts came in off the bench um, and gave them great minutes. Uh, into to the foul line, knocking down some foul shots, offensive rebound, put back. So those two guys have really been the guys that kept them in here because otherwise the, the rest of the guys, I mean, maybe a basket. I don't know if anybody scored more than one basket outside of those two. So uh, if I'm wing it, I'm really appreciative of Cottingham, and he's uh, continuing to have the success against the Bears that he's had the past couple of years. So he's going to be a, a focal point that they talk about in the locker room, trying to keep him under control. Um, and we'll, see. we'll see how it goes for him. 17 points in the first half for Jaron on his season average from last year. The first half was really entertaining. Let's hope the second half is the same. A 12-point lead for Lenore Ryan. We'll be back in about 11 minutes for the second half here in the conference opener from Shuford Gymnasium on the Bears Sports Network. This once in a generation project will give student athletes an advantage and position Lenore Ryan as a leader in academics and athletics. that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 Baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Emergencies don't wait. Get to the hospital. Accidents happen. Get well soon. 
When it hurts to move forward, tackle your pain. Don't make your health wait. See your doctor. Your health means everything. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Doesn't matter who you are, Everett has you covered. Proud sponsor of the LR Bears. If you play hard, if you use your feet to chase fitness goals, if you stand all day at work, introducing True Energy Infrared Technology Socks. These may be the best socks you ever wear. Our yarn is infused with infrared nanoparticles. Your body's natural heat ignites these tiny particles, producing infrared energy that improves circulation and stimulates cellular recovery. It's not magic, it's rocket science. The perfect sock for your active life, for fitness, performance, recovery, proven innovation to ignite your true energy. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Celebrate great with Carolina West Wireless. Great new phones and a great customer experience all on our great nationwide high-speed network. Stop by today and get big savings on select Samsung smartphones, like $350 off the Samsung Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus, and $350 off the Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra. The great savings continue with four lines of unlimited data for just $35 a month per line. Celebrate great savings and go stay connected wherever your travels take you. Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you.
Welcome back to The Shoe and the Bears Sports Network, presented by NBA Roofing. Eric Bach, Blake Simmons, so glad you're along with us on this Wednesday night in mid-November, the conference opener for both Lenore Ryan and Wingett. And Blake, it couldn't have been a better offensive first half for LR. 46 points, they shoot at 57% from the field, but Wingett's still very much in this game, mostly because of Jaron Cottingham and his ability to get to the free throw line. The, the Bulldogs shot 19 free throws in the first half. Absolutely, shooting 11 free throws in a game is great. Yeah. Not to mention 11 and a half. So like you said, Cottingham did a great job when the game was kind of getting stretched out there at the beginning. He was able to get to the free throw line, kind of stymie the Bears a little bit. Um, and uh, in the momentum, um, obviously sure. the Bears picked it up a little bit and it went back and forth a little bit, and the Bears are up 12 now. Um, but like you said, free throw line kept Winget in it. Um, the Bears did a great job scoring off turnovers and scoring in the paint. Um, so that's – I think the Bears would like to keep that up, especially that paint number. Yeah. Um, the three, you don't want to fall in love with the three right nope. now and keep attacking and uh, see where this lead is after the first, you know, five minutes, four or five minutes, first media timeout. 26 points in the paint in the first half for LR, 11 points for Kevin Kangu to lead the Bears, 10 points for Cooper Fowler, including a couple of threes. So really, all in all, it was about as good of a first half as you could have hoped for if you're the Bears. And as we know, with the series history, Wing gets primed to come back and make this thing interesting right down the stretch. So here we go in the second half. Bears and Bulldogs underway. Winget has the first possession of the half. And there's the man, Jaron Cottingham, first team all sack a year ago and living up to that tonight. 17 points in the first half, which was his season average last year. And takes a corner three and just has it rim out. Tim Steele, who was in foul trouble a little bit in the first half, was limited minutes wise, only played nine minutes in the first half with the rebound. Yeah, that was a great, really good look for Cottingham to start the half in and out. Fortunate for the Bears, they come back down on offense. Jalen Johnson, who had 34 the last game, will start his second half with the trip to the free throw line. Eight points for him on four of eight shooting, but didn't make a three after he made eight of them last time out. So, Yeah, it's hard to replicate eight threes in a game, but a little surprising that he didn't hit one in that first half. Had a couple of good looks, just couldn't get it to drop. Jalen, six for six from the free throw line this year. Now seven for seven. But just the sixth free throw attempt of this game for LR. They keep the rebounders back as Johnson misses the second. Nixon. Only played in four games last year due to injury. Back and healthy this season. Pringle drives baseline, dumps it off for Taylor who gets his shot partially blocked. Rebound grab by Johnson. Tim Steele, he can shoot it from out there. Can play about three or four different positions on the floor, so versatile. Called the catalyst today by his coaching staff of this offense. Into the short corner for Fowler. Open three for Nas Tyson. Great cut by there by Kangu there on the weak side. Was able to get Nas open. Pulled his defender into the paint. And Nas has got a great look there from three. Elmore thought about the three. Dumped it off to Pringle who gets his shot blocked. But right there to clean it up is Quantra Taylor. Kangu gets a step, gets the easy two. 13 for Kevin, that's right on his season average this through the first two games. Nottingham thought about the three, takes what they give him, and the kiss off the glass. The Bears like to play a defense where they keep, keep the ball on the side, but I think that angle right there was just a little too much for Cottingham with his speed. We'll see if they adjust moving forward. Steele traveled on the perimeter as he made that move. Malik Lagania will come in for him as Coach Sullivan not too pleased with Steele after the last possession. I think he can live with that type of turnover. Yeah. 
Lead still 11 for LR. It's been the Cottingham show. He's got 19 of the 38, half the points for Winget. Good crossover by Nixon. And a three for Elmore. Nixon runs down the offensive rebound but turns it over. Three on two. Open three in the corner for Jalen Johnson. He's got his first of the night. Right in front of the student section. Bears can get him going from the outside. Things will open up even more offensively. Great play there by Nas Tyson. Grabbing that loose ball that Wink has saved and finding Jalen in transition for that open three. Foul is on Tyson there on the drive by Cottingham. That is his second as you take a look at the three by Johnson. If you give a shooter like that that much space, it's just a matter of time. Pringle spins. Nice reverse layup. Got to get him going. That's his first bucket of the game for the Bulldogs. Senior 6'5", 210-pounder from Jacksonville, Florida. Another three for Johnson. Spins out. Rebound to Cottingham. Cottingham splits the defense. Tried to throw it up there to Roberts. Didn't work. And they have to pull it back out. Almost a travel there by Nixon, but he missed the shot. The rebound to Tyson. Johnson, fancy dribbling. And Kangu with some space and the lay-in. Winget did a good job containing Jalen in transition there, but Bears were able to set up some offense. Kangu able to use the ball screen and get downhill for that easy layup. The thing about Kangu is his conditioning is so good. The coaching staff says he can just run forever, doesn't need many breaks. Johnson tries to push the issue again. Kangu an open three. Off the top of the shot clock, out of bounds. But that's a good look. That's a look that Coach Sully will take every day of the week. Great look there. Great job pushing in transition. And you know when Jalen has the ball, he's, he's going to find you if you're open. So that's one of the good things about playing with a point guard like that is you run the floor, you're open in the half court. He's going to find you nine times out of ten. So The lead was 12 at halftime. It's 14 at the under-16 timeout of the second half. Lenore Ryan 54, wing at 40. Second half action continues when you come back to the shoe on the Bears Sports Network. Moret Stadium is an iconic part of LR Athletics. Hosting games, tailgating, marching band competitions, sports camps, and graduation ceremonies, the stadium serves as a valued focal point for the greater Hickory area. The time has come to renovate the stadium to allow LR to continue to offer our student athletes, fans, and the community an exceptional experience. Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. Welcome back to Schufer Gymnasium. In this presentation of the South Atlantic Conference on the Bears Sports Network presented by NBA Roofing. Eric Bach and Blake Simmons so happy you're along with us. A 14 point lead for Lenore Ryan continuing their good shooting night still over 50% on the night. They were up by 12 at halftime. You said at halftime Blake that this first four minutes to the under 16 timeout so crucial and the Bears were able to extend their lead even further. Yeah, it's great. Great when you're able to at least hold the lead or extend it, and they were able to do that by two. So I think Coach will be pleased with this first four minutes and hope to keep it up here in this next four. Nixon a good crossover. Tries to get past McLean and does, plus the foul. Nifty move there by Donnell Nixon, and he'll head to the stripe to try to complete the three-point play. Tyson did a pretty good job there. Leveling off the drive, he was just able to get that angle right around the rim and put it in with the attempt, with the shot for the three-point play. Second foul on McLean. Free throw is short. Rebound to Elijah Shabazz, who's in the game for the first time in the second half. 
coach will have something drawn up out of timeout. Let's see what they try and get to right here. They go to Legania. Tough physical lay-in. Great take there. Looks like looked like he might have got away with a push off, but no call. The Bears will take the layup every day. Jab step there from Nixon. And now a three for Wilson off the front iron. Battle for the rebound is one as Shabazz was out of bounds. He laid down on the sideline there. The ball will stay with the Bulldogs with 20 on the shot clock. Got to be careful giving Wilson that much space um, up to this point this year. He's made, I believe, nine threes. Uh, excuse me, eight threes at 42%. And he hit three in the first half against LR last year. So he's dangerous from behind the line. 38% overall a, a year ago. That one's stripped by Shabazz, and it will stay with the Bulldogs in the corner with 15 on the shot clock. Naismith in the game. He took the he had the Rip Hamilton mask on in the first half, playing without it here in the second. Roberts spins. Kicks to Elmore. Back to Roberts. Fouled. So Wingate picking up where they left off here in the second half as far as free throw shooting. Had 19 attempts as a team in the first half. Take a look at the replay as it's dumped off to Roberts. Just got Naismith in the air. Roberts now seven for seven from the free throw stripe tonight. Last year only played in two games. Didn't attempt or went four for six from the free throw line last year. So already more attempts from the line tonight than he had the entire season last year. Still a 13 point lead, 14 and a half to go for LR. Back in this zone now. This is giving the Bears a little bit of problems tonight. Elijah did a good job there, settling them down, getting them into something. Pass is tipped. Still got some time, don't need to rush. Five on the shot clock. McLean off the bounce. Got to shoot it. Legania just has to throw up a desperation heave that almost goes in. The rebound tipped around, and it will stay with Lenore Ryan as Pringle couldn't corral it. Good job there by Elijah fighting on the offensive glass to get LR another possession. And a line change coming for Everick Sullivan. Four people coming in. Tyson Steele, Fowler, and Johnson all coming in here at the 14-minute mark of the second half. Fresh 20 on the shot clock for LR. Cooper Fowler with 10 first-half points on four of six shooting. They feed him in the short corner. The big 6'11 center. Lefty runner. Off front iron. Tough shot there. Roberts did a good job wedging him out. Took that one-legged hook shot, kind of that running hook. Wasn't able to convert. Cross-court pass to Pringle. And they'll reset with Elmore. Ten to shoot. Screen from Pringle. Elmore throws it into his bench. That is the 14th turnover of this game for the Bulldogs. Only six in the game for LR. We can get back in that zone, trying to throw LR's rhythm off a little bit. Hopefully get him to take a quick shot, turn it over, maybe get an easy basket on the other end. Steal down low, doubled, tried to muscle it up, and it didn't work. Here comes Nixon. Elmore thought about a three and turned it over for the second straight possession. Nas Tyson doesn't have numbers and wisely pulls it back. Good crowd tonight for the conference opener here between these two rivals. Johnson got stripped. A good steal there by Wingate. Nixon almost traveled. And then they turn it over again. Third straight possession that the Bulldogs have turned it over. Coach Good has got to be frustrated with the amount of turnover so far tonight by Wingate. Tyson dribbles into a blue wall. Steals shot fakes and kicks. Can go a corner three. A little bit short. Fowler fights for the rebound, but it's won that time by Roberts. 
Wing is just a little out of sorts here this, these past couple minutes in terms of handling the ball. Perfect feed from Wilson to Roberts for the dunk. Wingett going back to the zone. Just trying to keep things switched, switching up for the Bears to try and throw them off offensively. They had some success with it in the first half, so they're going back to it. Fowler at the elbow. Tyson from the left wing. Can't hit it in front of his head coach. Deep one for Wilson. It's not a great shot there for the Bulldogs. Next whistle is the under 12. Only five combined fouls in this second half. Johnson stutter step. Steel cut off. Ten to shoot. Jalen pulls it. Hard screen there from Pringle. Nixon doubled, throws it into the short corner. They'll reset with 10 to shoot. Pringle will take a three. Misses it off front iron. Rebound grabbed there by Elmore. Goes up strong through Kangu. And now it's back to single digits. Timeout Wingate. And that will take us to the under 12 media timeout. LR hasn't scored in almost five minutes here in the second half. But the Bulldogs lead, the Bulldogs trail now only by nine as we've reached the under 12. LR 56, winged at 47 on the Bear Sports Network presented by NBA Roofing. Back here inside Schufer Gymnasium, a four minute, 47 second scoring drought right now for Lenore Ryan. What do you think Coach Sully's drawing up for the Bears' next offensive possession? I was just thinking, he's, he's probably talking to him about, I think eight of the 13 attempts so far from three this half. So getting back into that paint like they were in the first half and knowing that Wing has played some zone this game and in the last couple possessions, he'll have a play for them um, for a man and zone. Sometimes you have a play for either one play for man or zone, so if he's got something like that, he might have called that. Something to get it around the rim and hopefully get an easy basket here coming out of the timeout. 26 points in the paint in the first half for Lenore Ryan and only six here in the second half, so. See if they can get back to their bread and butter here at the end. Off the lob, they throw it up for Legania. He gets buried in the corner. Naismith had an open jumper, passed it up, and runs over the defender for an offensive foul. Yeah, tried to set up their lob there for Malik, who's a super athlete. Wingate did a good job recognizing it and uh, stopping that from happening, coming out of that timeout. So that last timeout, as you take a look at the Spangler replay, Naismith probably should have just shot the ball to start. The last timeout was just a Wingate timeout. This is the under 12 media timeout. A nine point lead for Lenore Ryan on the Bear Sports Network.
back here at the shoe. Eric Bonk and Blake Simmons ready to bring you the last 10.09 of this conference opener between Lenore Ryan and Wingate. These two meeting for the first time this year. The second meeting is down at Wingate on January 19th, so a good two months between meetings. Bears by nine right now, 56-47. LR looking for a stop on defense here. As they have not scored in over five minutes now. Three from Cottingham, that's down. And now it's six. This is the lo lowest the lead has been in a while. Good set there by Coach Good coming out of timeout to get his best player. Pretty good look from three. Cottingham able to knock it down and bring the uh, Bulldogs within six here with a little under ten minutes to go. Laganya slashing and laying it in off the glass. Good answer there. Good take by Malik getting downhill, laying it high off the glass to avoid the shot blocking coming over. Shot fake for Cottingham. Finger roll off the front of the rim, no good. Bears looking to push. Laganya again through contact. Back-to-back -back buckets for Malik. So now it's back to double digits. And now single digits as Nixon gets the fadeaway runner. Tough shot there by Nixon. Was able to get, get it to go in, though. Shake and bake and an offensive foul as Johnson gets called for the push-off. Jalen just a little bit too much extension there for the officials liking as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know if it's the consistency's been the best because I think Malik might have had a couple times this tonight where he's pushed off more than that. So yeah, just a couple possessions ago. Yeah, so didn't go Jalen's way that time. So they keep playing. Cottingham off the bounce through two defenders, too strong. Rebound to McLean. Only five points in the second half for Jaron Cottingham after a 17-point first half. So the Bears have figured him out a little bit. Johnson slashes and gets fouled. This one's on Destin Clark. Doesn't need much room. Got about half a step there, and he'll head to the free throw line. No, it is tough to keep Jalen Johnson out of the paint when he puts his mind to it. Sometimes it's just the part of putting his mind to it. Um, but like you saw there, a little bit of space off that ball screen, was able to get into the paint, draw the foul, go to the line for two. Jalen's second trip to the line tonight. Now he's two for three as Cooper Fowler comes back in. This Starting five other than McLean on the floor right now for LR. Kangu, Steele, Fowler, Johnson. The four starters as Jalen's got both the free throws. And the lead. Is 10. There's a run over, no whistle. And the floater misses there for Latino. Wingate went to a little pass and cut offense there. Was able to get into the lane, but wasn't able to hit that hook shot. Dribble handoff to Tim Steele. Straight away three. Rebound to Cottingham. Pretty good look there for Tim. Defender went under the screen, and he had some space to shoot it. Just wasn't able to knock it down. Nixon... So low to the ground, hard to defend him as the three goes for Sean Elmore. Back tough to seven. Tough shot by Elmore there with a hand in his face, but able to knock it down and wing it just stays within striking distance. Sticking around. Can't let him stick around too long if you're LR. Johnson kicks. Kangu passed up the three. Ten to shoot. He takes this three and leaves it short. Like you mentioned, passed up that first one. Hindsight 2020 20, probably should have shot that first one. Physical take for Nixon. Only five foot nine, 155 pounds. 
but he cuts the lead down to five. So the next whistle is the under eight timeout. Coach Sullivan probably waiting for that. McLean a three. That's a big shot off the screen from Fowler. Huge shot, huge shot from Tyson now. Hasn't been shooting the best this year, but is a really good shooter. Has proven it over the last couple of years for LR, and I'm sure to see one go down feels great for him at this point. Dump off to Latino, and he almost turns it over. Fight for the ball. It's loose, and now a held ball. Possession arrow favors Lenore Ryan. So when you come back to the shoe after the under eight timeout, it will be... Lenore Ryan basketball, assuming that we actually go to the media timeout. And now we do. Bears saw their lead cut down to five. Now it's eight with 6.10 to go on opening night in conference play. What a big win this would be for LR if they're able to hang on. You'll see if they can when you come back to the shoe on the Bears Sports Network. Six minutes and 10 seconds stand between Lenore Ryan and a statement conference opening victory here over Wingate. Eric Bach and Blake Simmons, glad you're along with us on this November Wednesday night. But you know that this last 6.05 is going to be as hard fought as they come. Yeah, it was almost the exact opposite last year at this point in the game. Wingate was up by 10 with six minutes to go. As you can see, LR is up by eight, so... Last year, LR was able to come back. We'll see if LR can uh, keep that from happening here tonight. Late clock for Kevin Kangu. It's been quiet in the second half. Throws it up, and Laganya can't get the rebound as the shot clock resets. Great look there. Just wasn't able to finish that, but great, great cut by Malik. Great find by Kevin. And well, the, the roof would have blown off oh. of the shoe if that would have gone down, and there's a steal on a lazy pass there. Elmore pulls into a three and hits it. Big shot for the Bulldogs, and they're down just five again. You can feel the tension starting to rise here in Schufer Gymnasium. Fowler hit a couple threes in the first half and airballs that one. Another open three for Elmore. He's got back to back. The lead is two. Coach Mike. Nope, doesn't look, look like he's gonna play on. Some coaches would maybe call a timeout here with the momentum, but coach has got a play that he likes that he's gonna go to. Johnson crossover in the lane, gets fouled. Coach Good upset with Pringle there for committing the Obvious fouls. You take a look at the Spangler replay. Yeah, contact there, but only the third personal on Wink at this half. So the Bears got a lot, a bit to go to get into that bonus. This is the type of games that these two play. Single digits always. Tim Steele with his back to the basket gets it back out to Tyson. McLean had a big shot 
a couple of possessions ago to kind of break the scoring streak, but it's over two minutes again for LR. Five to shoot. Laganya, stutter step, floater. Doesn't get the roll. Elmore's hit two in a row, misses that one. And the foul goes on McLean on the rebound. It'll stay with the Bulldogs. When you drew up a little set there to get Elmore another shot after he's knocked down his last two threes. Wasn't able to get that one to go, but Nixon's able to draw the foul on Tyson there on the offensive rebound. Get the ball, get them another possession. See if McLean pushed. Yeah, he did. Yeah. That might just be a little weight room right there. I mean, when you're battling and you're stronger, sometimes it just happens where you move them. Fifth team foul on Lenore Ryan. Wing gets committed three. 4.04 to go. They barely get it in. Pringle one on one with Laganya. Spins, pivots, and misses wide right. Tyson the rebound. Throws it away, throws it over to Steele. Bears hold on to their lead for now. Pango stutter step, reverse layup, left it short. Got where he wanted to, just got there with stumbling a little bit, wasn't able to get it up over the rim on that reverse layup there. Pass too far, and another turnover. That's number 18 on the night for the Bulldogs. McLean, kick, open three for Laganya. Around and out. Fowler coming back to the scorer's table to come back in. This has been a war tonight in the second half especially. Driving layup, just misses for Cottingham. Good D there by Nas Tyson. Angling him out on that layup attempt and making him take that tough running layup right there. Timeout, Lenore Ryan, 2.45 to go. Bears up two. This will be a full timeout as we head into our final media timeout of the night. Crunch time coming up. You know you don't want to go anywhere. LR by two over Wingate on opening night on the Bears Sports Network. Celebrate great with Carolina West Wireless. Great new phones and a great customer experience all on our great nationwide high-speed network. Stop by today and get big savings on select Samsung smartphones, like $350 off the Samsung Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus, and $350 off the Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra. The great savings continue with four lines of unlimited data for just $35 a month per line. Celebrate great savings and go stay connected wherever your travels take you. Down the stretch we come here inside Schufer Gymnasium. An opening night of SAC Conference play. Got another instant classic brewing here. Bears by two, they've got the basketball. We get out in a little zone. Probably thinking LR was gonna call something against man. Looks like LR might have because they're a little, little uh, Johnson confused, slashes right? and will head to the free throw line. Fouls on Roberts. That's his first. It's nice to have a player like Jalen Johnson when the play doesn't go as planned or breaks down. He's able to get into that paint, draw some contact, get to the line, chance of two free throws. 14 tonight for Jalen. Swishes the first. He's four for five from the free throw line. 
he and Kangu lead the Bears with 15 each. Fowler hasn't scored here in the second half. Had 10 at halftime and still has 10. This is a big shot here to make it a two possession game. And he does. Bears nine for 11 from the charity stripe tonight after only shooting 57% over the opening weekend. Elmore's been hot from three in the second half and continues. That's three threes in the last four minutes for Sean Elmore. He's got 16 points and four threes for the game. Back to a one-point game. Yeah, he's come up really big the last, these last couple of minutes with those three threes like you mentioned. Bears got a little lost in, uh, in the midst of that, the offensive or defensive possession there. Elmore was able to get some space and knock down his third three in the last couple of minutes. Late clock for Kevin Kangu. Slashes, finger roll. Back to three. Minute 35 to go. What a game. Wilson can shoot it from the outside. Decides to take it down to the paint. Cunningham's been quiet in the second half. No, it's Tyson doing a great job there, using his body, cutting off Cottingham. Driving layup for Nixon. Back to a one-point game, trading baskets. Great left hand. We can't finish by Nixon there, finishing over the much taller Cooper to bring this game within one. Big possession after big possession. One minute to go. Johnson. Kicks, open three for Kangu. That's a big one. Great job there by Jalen getting into the paint and finding Kangu in the corner to make this a four point game with less than a minute to go. 20 points for Kangu. Elmore's been hot from three in the second half, not giving him an inch. Cottingham thought about it. Now we'll drive and lay it in. Back to two. Probably have to foul here if you're winged. I don't know if there's enough time between the shot and game. Yeah, clock. only two second difference. And Coach Sullivan telling the guys to hold back. They're going to play this out, at least for now, but you can't. And now a foul yeah. on Wilson as the Bulldogs figured out that the, the difference wasn't big enough. And they yeah. commit the foul. That's only the fifth team foul on wing it so still one more foul to give with 15 seconds and the shot clock off and Brian Good will spend a timeout. Yeah I don't think Coach Good actually wanted him to foul there but I think it'll he'll realize it's seemed probably, like it was the right play. Yeah it's in their favor to do that so and like you said with still two two fouls to go so you would gotta think LR could probably take mm, three or four more seconds off here before they get to the line so obviously they gotta be uh, strong with the ball uh, can't be lax. Lax today just throwing it in, so I'm sure that coach has drawn something up to get open and uh, catch the ball. And They might try and trap once, maybe, uh, but I think they'll just go ahead and try and foul this first time and uh, get, to them, get LR to the line as quick as possible to try and extend this game. What do you think the inbound play is going to look like here for the Bears? It might be a line look, a line look, and then they'll just be breaking off in different directions. LR just became the 30th Division II program to have 1,400 wins in program history. Number 1,401 would be pretty big if they can get it off. And they get the pass off. McLean takes a three and hits it. Oh, my goodness. Coach Sullivan throws his hands up as Cottingham misses. Offensive rebound is thrown away with point eight. I don't think that's the shot they wanted, but it worked out. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, I think there will be a conversation among what could have been a better way to go about wow. that, that uh, last possession there, but it worked out with Tyson hitting the three. And the game ends on that note. Lenore Ryan 75, Wingate 70, as Coach Ooh. Sullivan and Coach Good share a, a laugh and a handshake at half court. What a night. If all the nights are like this at the shoe, it's going to be a crazy season.
Oh, a yeah, statement gotta... win for the Bears to start the 2021-22 SAC conference season, Blake. Woo, take a breath. Oof. Yeah, that was a great finish to uh, our second game of the night, just like the first one. Yeah. Like we said, I don't know if that's the, that's the shot that they even wanted to take a shot Shouldn't there. Shouldn't have been taking any shots, I don't think. Right, but it worked out for him. Tyson stepped into it, hit his second three of the half. Confident, I'm sure that's going to make him feel good. Uh, like we mentioned, he was kind of struggling to shoot the ball at the start of the year, but two threes in the last ten minutes of the second half and that last one to push the lead to five and pretty much seal the deal has got to feel good for him uh, as we pick up this win against Winget. Bears end up shooting 49% from the field and only turn it over ten times. I mean, those two factors combined is going to win you a lot of ball games no matter who the opponent is this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Uh, looking at the last stat sheet, I don't know what they finished with, but 36 points in the paint. Coach Sawyer will be happy with yeah. that. Ended uh, with 38. Yep. 21 points off turnover some, or somewhere around there. I mean, you got to be happy with that. Most of those were in the first half, but they all count the same. First or second half, so... Um, and six assists, 18 turnovers. I mean, some of that had to do with Wingus, but a lot of that had to do with LR's defense. So, I mean, got a little tight there at the end, but LR came out with the win and can't complain about picking up a conference win to start the conference season, no matter how it comes. And on the flip side for Wingus, I mean, they were down double digits for most of the game, but they came back and were within a couple of shots of stealing one tonight. So all is not lost for Brian Good and the Bulldogs, but... This night really did belong to the Bears. Yeah, it kind of it feels like it, it must be illegal for an LR Wingate game yeah. to be more than double digits. Another cause. single digit one yep. add into the list. Yep. I mean, it, even those single digits seem to be, you know, six, five, two possession games yeah. at the most. And so another one tonight, and really it got pushed out there by that three, so it could legitimately have been the three point game. But like we said, another tight single digit game from LR and Wingate, so and always good to come out with on top when in these kind of games, especially against Wingate and in conference. So great night for the Bears, the Bears uh, basketball team overall. Win number 1401 in program history. Lenore Ryan takes a tight, close game tonight with Wingate in the conference opener, 75-70. to 70. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. For Blake Simmons and the rest of our crew, I'm Eric Box saying so long until next time when the Bears are home. We'll talk to you then on the Bears Sports Network.